Hello everyone. Welcome to the channel of RD Automation Learning. In this video, we will be discussing the answer that you should give for an important interview question that is how to explain the roles and responsibilities for an automation tester. Now, many of the people, even though they have mentioned in their resume, in their CV, that they are doing uh, automation, they are doing development, they are doing scripting, they are doing uh, test case estimation as a part of automation role, but still they fail to tell the exact terms that the interviewer wants to hear when you exactly say the roles and responsibilities. Now, what does role and responsibilities mean? It does not mean just to do the coding, just to write the automated test cases. It has a lot of, a lot of depth within this particular answer. So you have to explain this particular thing in detail. Okay, so in this video, we will be explaining the answer of this particular question with respect to an experienced person point of view, with respect to fresher a fresher point of view, with respect to the test automation architect point of view, right? So let us uh, see this answer in detail. But before that, if you're watching this video for the very first time, then please do hit like, share and subscribe our channel, right? Now, see roles and responsibilities, it would be depending on the organization level on the project requirements on which you are working, someone might be working in a, a project in which the BDD framework is being developed. Someone might be working in some different project where even Vinium tool has been used or someone might be using the framework in which Selenium plus test engine might be used. So there are lots of varieties in this. So accordingly, you will have to update the answer. But I'll tell you a few of the generic aspects that you need to speak up when this question is asked to you in an interview. If you will cover all these points, then 70 to 80% you are there in an interview, right? And until and unless you just speak, I am writing test cases, we are just automating this particular steps. So that doesn't look uh, to be sound good to on an impression that doesn't gives a good impression on the interview, right? So first of all, there are various aspects that even an automation tester has to take care, right? So first of all, let's start with the first Point. So this is requirement analysis. So as a requirement analysis, what does an automation tester do, right? So they will collaborate with the development and they will collaborate with the QA team to understand the application requirement and design effective test automation strategies. Okay. So now uh, many of you would be asking, so how, how should I introduce? So whenever you are introducing yourself, so you just have to tell that I am so and so person, let's say I'm RD, I'm working in uh, an organization for XYZ years, right? And there you don't have to mention I'm working as a manual tester for two years. I'm working, working as an automation tester for three years. You just tell that I'm working as a QA, I'm working as a tester or whatever the test position that you have. You don't have to explicitly reveal that you are working as an automation or you are working as a manual in the first then if they will ask you roles and responsibilities over there you have to tell okay see we take part in the requirement analysis now here if it's a fresher so they will be collaborating with the development and qa team if it's an automation uh, guy then experienced person right again intermediate person then they will be telling okay we will be discussing this particular test cases and we will be discussing oh, how should we automate, whether those particular things are already there or not. So let's take an example of BDD framework. Okay, you all are aware about BDD framework, what it is. Now in BDD framework, we generally write keywords based on test cases. Now these test cases are again written by the manual team members. And from keywords, we will have step definition files. And from that, we will have the, and also we will update the runner. So whenever you have this first point requirement analysis, so you will understand what needs to be automated, right? So as a fresher, you can say that uh, I'm writing keywords and I'm writing the code also, but I'm also writing the keywords based on the keyword library. So keyword library is nothing, but it's a kind of a document which contains the list of keywords that has been created so far. Right. So list of keywords that has been created so far that will have a keyword library from that, whether it's a fresher or it's an experienced person, they'll check whether this keyword is already existing there or not. So if it is already existing one, they will continue to reuse that. If it is not an existing one, then they will create a new and they will update the document accordingly. 
okay then the step definition files they will write the code now if you are a fresher you can say that you are understanding the requirement okay yes. what needs to be automated if you are an experienced person then you can say we are coming up with a strategy to how to or you are de designing an approach here on how to quickly automate this in let how to automate the maximum test cases in less around turnaround of time right so as an experience you have to tell in the requirement analysis you will analyze the requirement and you will come up with the strategy okay so this is what you will tell in the requirement analysis when it comes to test planning okay so if you are a fresher then you can skip this particular point because planning will not be done by you you will be directly assigned the task by the test lead or a test manager if you are an experienced person right then you will identify which actually scenarios are eligible for automation for example i'll give you an example also eligible for automation should be done should not be done so that particular decision would be taken here which particular test cases should be automated now there are some test cases some test scenarios i'm just taking on a high level example so let's say if it's a banking based application okay and you have to come up with some happy path flow that contains almost 15 test steps and on the 16th test step you have to verify some email thing and all those things so that will not be considered as a good scenario for automation because that is a one time scenario if it's a scenario which is very important from the business perspective the payment functionality is working or not or in an e-commerce the search functionality is working or not right those kind of critical scenarios which are repeatable which are important from business point of view those needs to be automated so for, for an experienced person it becomes mandatory in test planning to identify which are the test cases that need to be automated what is the eligibility criteria there so they also have to think for the future perspective if i will automate this is it going to meet my goal in the future right so those kind of things tool and technology selection now when it comes to fresher so again uh, the fresher would be directly given some particular framework which the leads would have already created and it would be they would be working on that particular tool and as an experienced person you can tell that you are doing technical feasibilities technical feasibility what is technical feasibility the interviewer might ask you so technical feasibility is nothing but you will check the feasibility of particular software you will check the feasibility of some particular automation tool whether it is good to go for whether it is good to be taken for this particular project or not so that kind of decision making is something that an experienced person will take care when i say experienced it is six six 0.5 seven plus years of experience now if i am saying automation architect if you are someone who is on an architect level who is a principal as that right then they will be designing the framework you will be coming up with your own framework you will be having that capability of creating your framework so you have to tell in tool and to technology section that we are designing this framework again framework creation is a one-time activity but then it needs to be done from the scratch so you will have reporting mechanism you will have listeners you will have uh, test coverage kind of things you will have a uh, test coverage kind of things it means the tool that will cover the test coverage then you will have ci cd pipelines integration all those things so again ci cd also we are coming okay but which which ci cd tool you would like to go which devops tool you would like to integrate is it azure devops is it jenkins which one is the best tool which will support your framework right so that kind of decision making power is with automation architect with experienced people they can also add to with respect they can also add some points with respect to their experience for a fresher you don't have to tell much on this point because it is null and void for you you have to go ahead with the tool that is or the framework that has already been built up by the seniors test script development okay now when i say test script development so again 
you are developing the new scripts you are implementing the new scripts also there is a cost of maintaining the automated test scripts sometimes you know what happens the people they just tell in an interview i am developing the script i am doing coding 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 for 8 hours you cannot be involved in a coding if you are a senior person right if you are a fresher person still 8 hours is something that no one can do coding 6 hours you will uh, do coding 2 hours maybe you will understand the requirement one hour you might have to sit with the seniors to get your code reviewed. So those are the different aspects of each and every individual. So test script development, you also have to maintain the autom automated scripts that has been already created. For example, if the script was created uh, three to four months back and uh, you did not get an opportunity or chance to run that particular script. Now that particular feature is being changed or modified and there is some changes that has been done in the flow of that particular feature. Then automatically the automated script needs to be modified. If there is a change in the locator of that particular uh, web application, so then it will be changed. The automation script needs to be changed, right? So you will ensure the scripts are modular, reusable and adhere to coding standards. Now, if you are a fresher, so yes, developing, implementing and maintenance of automated test scripts that you need to do. If you are an experienced person, again, yes, developing, implementing and maintaining automated test scripts will do. But as a part of experienced person, you will also ensure that you are using whenever you are maintaining, you are reusing the code. You are not writing the new code, right? So this is something that as an experienced person, you have to tell here. And also you have to review the code of the fresher and you also have to guide him. You also have to mentor him or her that you have to use the reusable classes, reusable functions rather than writing the code, new code. So if, if the new code is there, then the lines of the code in the framework will get increased, right? And hence it will impact the performance of the framework. So ensure that if it, you can use reusable code, it is well and good. Test execution. Test execution remains uh, common for fresher as well as experience. They both will do, be doing the test execution, right? Continuous integration, continuous deployment, CACD. This is something that an experienced person can tell that which DevOps tool will be integrated and how the integration is being done. And what was their contribution in the integration? Did they Were they part of that DevOps integration team? right so that kind of aspect a experienced person can tell from a fresher perspective you can tell okay you are uh, running the pipeline it has been triggered and you are verifying the scripts are being triggered right maintenance and enhancement now this is something that you will see from the test automated test coverage aspect Okay, now whenever you do automation, so in an organization, whether it's a service based company or it's a product product based company, after some period of time, they'll be asking you, what is the automation coverage for your uh, framework that you have done? What is how much coverage we have got? How much test coverage we are covering with this automation? So if you are an fresher, then again, there are multiple tools that are available for having that particular code coverage, right? So you can integrate that particular tool and you can run your automation and you will come to know what percentage it is 50%, 55%, for example, is the coverage. Now, if you're an experienced person, then you will have to tell that uh, how did you come up with the test, with increasing of the test coverage thing. So, for example, you had 55% of coverage, right? then you might would have set you might would have collaborated with the development team you might would have uh, co coordinated with the uh, programming coding team that have done the coding and you will sit with them okay this function this class is not being covered in the automation maybe you will take the unprotected binary files from them and you will run the automation so they'll come to know okay this particular code coverage is to be done this particular code is not being covered by the automation scripts and hence you will identify okay this class this function is not being used so which it is pointing to which particular feature right so once you get that feature then you will automate that feature and then the code coverage will increase maybe by two percent five percent it depends on the feature right so this is how the story you have to create while telling how as an experienced person you are doing maintenance and enhancement 
collaboration working closely with the manual testing team so sometimes you have to understand the test cases test scenarios with the manual team and you are participating in the cross-functional team this is again common for both fresher as well as experienced documentation it is more done by from the experience point of view fresher can avoid as a fresher you don't have to do much of documentation as an experienced person you have to update maybe the test automation diagram the block diagram the various third party tools integration that they you have done you will have to document the technical aspect the technical walkthrough of that particular entire framework so that kind of documentation performance and load testing again if you are a fresher you don't need to tell this point but yes if you are an experienced person again now if you are a mid-level of experienced person you will tell okay i'm testing the performance by integration of jmeter with selenium if you're an art architect role then you will tell that okay we are thinking to integrate this particular tool for with uh, selenium to do this performance testing to do this load load testing what will be your approach what are what is your strategy why did you choose this points what are the go green points for you so those kind of aspects you have to tell training and knowledge sharing again as a fresher you just have to tell okay you are getting you are taking those updates whatever about the new tools or technologies that are happening in the market as an experience you have to tell you are mentoring your team you are coming up with the new courses within the organization and you are training them maybe one hour every day in the morning you are conducting knowledge sharing sessions with the freshers who have recently joined so that's how the experience and fresher will play a role stay updated on industry trends so this will be applicable to again fresher as well as experience so in this video we covered a very important interview question how what are the different roles and responsibilities for an automation tester who is working from the selenium automation point of view that needs to be told from a fresher from an experienced person point of view right so that's it for this video thank you so much for watching this video and stay tuned for more updates